Good morning. I think I'll start my own series over here of messages. I, uh, my confidence in coming here, standing for you, and trying to share God's word is uh, I have seen or I believe the Lord's hand on the process of me coming here to share God's word with you. I, uh, I did not orchestrate it or de devise it. I just believe there might be some people or some situation wherein God will use me to deliver a special message. I hope it's you. So uh, I'd be in the right time, in the right place. But I believe that. So in spite of uh, me being nervous standing before you, I still have the confidence believing that God is at work. or God, uh, God will work through it. Anyway, I was uh, trying to uh, deliver a message. I mean, I thought of sharing a message about faith. So I went to... Uh, the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Try to skim through it and uh, study it. So I came uh, down to verse uh, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I think that is where the application is at, or the action plan for that uh, enumerations of uh, the Hall of Faith, or a list of those who had been faithful in the past. So my... Uh, theme for this one is uh, making history of faith from Hebrews chapter 12, verse uh, uh, 1 to 3. Last time I alluded with the uh, verse that says, uh, God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And uh, let me be the fool at, the, at this time. And somebody said, no, uh, because the Bible said, the fool saith in his heart, there is no God. Oops. <laughs> But I was alluding to the New Testament fool where it says, uh, he who is wise in this world, let, let him become a fool so he'll be wise. I uh, look at the background for that a little bit. It says, when you serve the Lord, uh, you need to be willing to be considered like a fool. Like, because the word of the Lord is foolishness to this world. So there is, no, there is, uh, there is going to be a situation you will be regarded as foolish man when you try to uh, reach out to the lost until the Lord work in their heart and make things uh, make sense everything on what God is uh, working through them so this one uh, I believe is uh, understood with uh, with a heart of uh, heart of faith and I believe that's the situation so uh, let me pause for prayer and ask the Lord for for that thing Father in heaven, we, I pray again for this message. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's uh, uh, promised to us as our teacher. I thank you that you don't only work at this time, but you work uh, uh, in, many, uh, in many ways, even outside this, uh, uh, outside this room and uh, places where we're at. We pray. I pray, Lord, that you would use this message, remind it to us so it become part of our life. I pray for your leading then, in Christ's name. Amen. All right. I ask believers uh, sometime of what I heard, uh, a question that says, uh, <clears throat> what are we going to remember, or uh, what are the good memories that we are going to cherish in heaven? My answer were usually, are the things that we suffer here on earth. Because you cannot contest pleasure in heaven with pleasure here on earth. But after this study, I think that's half, uh, that's incomplete answer. I think the correct answer is this. The thing that we will remember in heaven are the history made by faith. Because that is what pleases God. The thing, that, so it doesn't, is it not necessarily the suffering that uh, uh, we experience here on earth were the ones, you know, we cherish in heaven. It can also be the joy we had here because we had it because of faith. So I think that's, uh, that's the complete answer. It might be uh, suffering or it might be something else. The background for this, of course, is uh, chapter 11. Uh, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 is chapter 11. 
Uh, I uh, selected that because it's kind of like summary of uh, what it is. In this all, having had witness born to them, chapter 11 of Hebrews, uh, born to them through their faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing concerning us, that apart from us, this should not be made perfect. So uh, the holistic completion of the promise is not yet. It is waiting for the completion of us when we are included in that history. I had some of those uh, brain pictures over there because in 1990, there is this study of uh, memory implant. <clears throat> Apparently, they can implant memory on human brain and they can try to manipulate behavior because of that. Let's say trying to stop smoking, things like that. And uh, after I thought of that, there are lists or several Hollywood movies created upon those uh, uh, plot that they can implant memory. Like somebody who suddenly become an assassin because they've, <laughs> they've implanted training on there and suddenly he knew karate or something like that, martial arts with implanted memory over there. I know you knew some of those uh, movies. Uh, I don't have to uh, elaborate though. There are a lot of those, if uh, recall. So it started in 1990. The first study, I believe, it was called Lost in, uh, Lost in the Mall because the implanted shown pictures, I don't know how they do that, but uh, with those implants, he believed that he got lost, she got lost in the mall for some time in her life. And they try to do that by, you know, like what I said, stopping a vice, like smoking or somebody, something like that. So with all those, uh, with all those story, you know, actually, it's some kind of changing somebody else's personal story, changing their background. And I think it is this one. Why? Because we are in if. As believers, we are, actually, we are actually continuing a journey. In the Exodus, remember that there are no adults except Joshua and Caleb went into the promised land. Most, if not all of them, were born during the Exodus. Someone made a study, he said, about 20 and below. And remember, Exodus happened for 40 years. So no original people that came out from Egypt actually entered the promised land or the land of rest. Now, somebody are born along the way. It's like us. We are born along the way. We are saved along the way. But we pick up on the story. We pick up on what's going on. That's how it changes our life as believers. We pick up on the story of faith. I think that's what's telling us on, uh, on Hebrews, connecting the dots over here for us to uh, uh, move on with this Christian story. <clears throat> so I, uh, my point in saying that is like, uh, is the process of changed life, I think, is picking up on making history of faith in our life. There are several examples I'd wanna share at the end of this uh, of this message, so let's go to uh, let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter twelve. That's our text. I'll try to reveal my outline for this, like uh, Mr. Dunstep does. So, uh, if Lord comes in the middle of the message, I'm, I'm done with it. <clears throat> uh, my outline for this is that first one. Okay, therefore, since we are surrounded by Surrounded by great cloud of witnesses, what are they witnessing? They are saying life of faith is possible. It can happen. So that is my uh, first outline. It is uh, life of faith is possible. I mean, uh, consider the encouragement. Consider the encouragement. And then second one is looking to Jesus according to grammatical construct which I show uh, later on, it says, when we look to Jesus, that is removing your sight on, on something to be able to look on one direction. So I think that's the strategy. So just remember 
the encouragement and remember the strategy. I think that's what he's saying there. I, uh, I seen a lot of uh, 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 outline for that online, but I will, uh, I will stick to that one. So what are we trying to look out for, from? We lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. I think these weight are the things that uh, hinder us from serving the Lord that are not necessarily sin. That's the commentaries keep saying. And the sin which clings so closely is not exactly the habits of sin that we do, but it is the, uh, this is a uh, noun. I understood from one of my teachers that every time the sin is uh, uh, portrayed as a noun in the Bible, it is usually the, the flesh, the sin that is in our members, Romans says. It is the nature of sin that's in us. So this sin is in a form of noun. It is actually our sin that stays so closely all the time, you know. But it's not us. The sin is not us. The sin is the one where Jesus lives. It's the one that Jesus redeemed. So the Bible says, uh, uh, put out the old man, okay, and put on the new man created in Christ Jesus. But Along the way of this strategy, it says, run with endurance. So uh, I'm going to play along with, uh, with this one. Uh, why, what's the relationship of endurance and, and hope in this one? But uh, this message, I think there's part two of it. But anyone who does not want to take part in this race, at the bottom it says, God will chastise them. So this race is actually like an exodus thing. It's an evacuation. It's a journey that people need to take. It's like God is saying, you get out from here. If you don't participate, there will be chastisement. Life in this world is, I mean, this world is not our home, right? But there is a big tendency that we will be so attached with this life. We are so attached with this life. We are even so attached with our own bad habits. You know, we are attached with uh, who we think we are. We are attached to our house. We are attached with so many things. And on the process, God is trying to remind us that we are an, on an exodus. We are in a journey from Egypt, which is a picture of the world, to promised land, which is a picture of our rest. Okay? But we can have the mental, emotional, psychological rest right now in Christ Jesus. We cease from our own work. Why? Because uh, we don't believe that we are saved by our work. Okay? We are just, uh, we are saved by grace. In that grace, God wants us to live out who we are in Christ Jesus. Now, the first one is this one. So, uh, consider the encouragement. The part from, uh, that part from us, this should not be made perfect. That apart from us, this should not be made perfect. Chapter 11, verse 40, he's talking about the story. He's talking about the journey being continued by us, by, by the list of these believers in chapter, chapter 11. I heard somebody said, uh, if you learn, you are wise if you learn from your experience. But you are wiser if you learn from others' experience. We should not always learn from our experience. Because there are things in this life that are one-time, one-time deal. Example of them is death. You cannot say, let's try this poison, see if it's really that deadly. No, there's no repeat uh, performance in that one. There is just one time we need to learn from others' experience. That's actually why the, the story of these believers were recorded, so we can learn from them. We don't have to experience everything. We are wiser if we learn from other people's experience. That's why we go to school. Those should be an, those were, should be an accumulation of wisdom from from of old, right? But what's going on right now is that when baby is born, we'll let them decide for themselves. What? 
That's one example of stupidity. Where are the centuries of learning should be passing on to the next generation and we let them decide for themselves? I, I think you know where, where I'm going with that. Uh, Mr. Guire already mentioned that already in the announcement. But, you know, we are, it, that's, that, that's the Bible. It says that these are written for our learning, that through faith and patience we will have hope. And uh, I think that's very true. We, uh, we need to learn from others' experience. Now, a sample of this history, <clears throat> sample of this history is uh, from verse 32 up to verse 36. That's a group of experience over there. It says, what, uh, and what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel the prophet, who through, uh, who through faith conquered kingdoms. Wow, we like this. We want to conquer kingdoms, enforce justice, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions, and quench the power of fire, escape the aids of the sword. We're made strong out of weakness. Yes, we're weak that we can be strong out of weakness. Even old age can bear children. That's Sarah, right? I'm giving hope to some people over here. <laughs> Stop them out, uh, uh, become mighty in war, put foreign armies to fight, to flight. Women receive back their dead by resurrection. Have we ever witnessed a resurrection on our lifetime? They did. Some were uh, tortured, uh, refusing to accept release so that they might uh, rise again for a better life. That's the first group over there. I call that success group. But this group is the suffering group. <laughs> Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. Oh, they're probably coming in America. Imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn a son uh, in two. They were killed with sword. They were, uh, went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute or poor, afflicted, mistreated. <clears throat> I'm sure everybody of us wants this first group. They don't want a second group, right? What is he, what is he saying? There's a spectrum of story of success and a story of suffering, but it's different with all people, with different people and how they live a life of faith. Some people, when they live a life of faith, they become rich. Some people, when they live a life of faith, faith they need to be poor. <laughs> Why? Because some people trust in the uncertain riches. They trust in money more than they trust the Lord. If we, have come, if we have become poor when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe it's us. <clears throat> it's different to all people. Some people are suffering right now. We don't try to make light of their suffering. But in all the circumstances, they can live a life of faith. I think God is saying to us, what's your success? Let it be a story of faith. What's your failure? What's your suffering? Let it be a story of faith. What's our struggles right now? Let it be a story of faith. Why? Because you will remember that for eternity. Not really, not necessarily suffering. All this time I thought it's suffering. <laughs> that we will remember in heaven. No, it's the story of faith. I wish I have more story of this. I wish I have more success that I can say it is indeed by faith. But I have some. I have prayers answered and I think I'm living it out right now. Me being here in America were because of other people's faith. I think. I believe. <clears throat> They've been praying, they've been working towards it, and suddenly we are, we are here. Well, I thank the Lord for that. It's a big opportunity. I struggled with it for, yeah, I did struggle with it because I was a pastor in the Philippines. So I was thinking, uh, okay, I leave this one and go, get over there. So you see how I believe that this is God's leading for me to be here, at least to speak here right now. And I believe that's the Lord's leading, not not me. I did not plan it. So if the Lord is speaking to you right now, it's not me trying to get you to do something. 
I hope you think it's the Lord speaking to you. There are some stories being done in your life right now. Let it be a story of faith. Let it be not, because people can live like this. Some people say to them, you will never amount to anything. And they spend their life trying to prove that they are somebody. Just to, just to show their finger to the one who had cursed them before. You said, I never amount to anything. Look at me now. We can waste our life with that, right? I think that's not a story of faith. Let God build our story of faith. Anyway, it's different to all people. I think that's what he's saying in there. But uh, there is uh, some kind of confusion over there for a little bit because it says in verse 14, uh, 39 and 40 that those who had believed before did not obtain the promise. And here he said, by faith, they obtained promises. There is to be some uh, contradictory of that one. One of the best examples of that one is uh, uh, Abraham. He said, you will have a multitude of descendants. And Abraham, he said, it is fulfilled with just one child. So, guys, we will be in heaven someday. We will have, uh, we'll belong to the Lord. But in here, we can have a fulfillment of belonging to him, belonging to God's people, right? Someone had said, uh, sometimes people need to belong before they can believe. I did not forget that and chew that, meditate on that for a long time. And I think that's one of the reasons why I was trying to reach out for my Filipino group uh, because I wanted I want the place where we can belong, even if they have not believed yet. Because sometimes people need to belong before they can believe. One of them example is Peter. Peter, uh, Jesus went out fishing with him. You remember that? They uh, let down the net. Okay, because you said so, I'd uh, let down the net, we told all night. But after that, when we had a load of fish, Peter said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. He went fishing first with Jesus Christ before he realized he is a sinner. Well, we can't have pastors in here to be, <laughs> or officers in here to be unbelievers, but I guess we can have every, uh, on the pew that, you know, God's still working in their, in their life. Maybe it's one of us today. We've been part of the church, but it needs to start to create history of faith in our hearts. Because all our, all our life have been calculations of our, my own wisdom, our own effort. I'll do this so that this thing will happen. I'll do this. It's all our wisdom. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And by not leaning on your own understanding. And I think that's a history of faith. So uh, let's continue to see other encouragements. Not just these past believers, but Jesus Christ himself. This is one of the few verses that is mentioned in the Bible that the cross is presented as an example, not just a substitution. MacArthur said it only happens twice. This one in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. All the rest of the mention of the cross is a substitution for you. It, that is done so that it will take our place. But one of them, it is treated like an example. That he, Jesus Christ, he had seen the joy before him, so he endured the cross. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It is an example this now. He is trying to... Uh, say to us, especially in verse 4, it's not there, but it says in verse 4, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. That's Jesus Christ. And yet you have forgotten the exhortation that says, My son, do not disregard or regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when, when reproved by him. So as he's trying to say, quit your drama. TikTok, or I mean social media, is filled with so many drama, right? 
When you scroll down, it's funny because when I go to work, everybody's on their cell phone. Even me, I could not, I could pass hours just scrolling uh, st stories after little stories over there. People creating their good and making little stories, short stories, the drama of life. Jesus is saying, you have not yet resisted against the sin with the point of shedding your blood. Quit your drama. Let's endure. I think it's... Uh, Put the word endurance over there because the word looking, we'll uh, see it over here, it's a continuous action. Reguar is uh, alluding to us seeking God. It's time to seek after God. Like it's a one-time thing in other verses, but in here, seeking God is a continuous action. So that's... Uh, those were the encouragement. Jesus Christ himself were the encouragement. Now, the strategy, this is what I'm talking about. The word looking over there is a present active participle. I am only saying that because I read it in a grammar book on how uh, be used. <laughs> it sounded like I know uh, grammar, but <clears throat> I need my wife for this, for grammar. Huh? Looking, it says, uh, present active participle, it expresses a continuous or re a repeated action. So uh, it also expresses the meaning of it. It says, the next slide, please. Uh, aparo, apparently that's the Greek one, but it means to turn the eyes away from other things and fix them on something. So I think patient, patience is mentioned over there. Why? Because it is a continuous exhortation action that we do. We seek God to be saved. We seek God when we are saved. We seek God when we wait for him. We seek God if we try to understand who we are. In many myriads of implication in our Christian life, we seek God. The Bible says it's, uh, it's mentioned in our service earlier. You will find me if you will seek me with all your heart. Things will make sense. With God, in our relationship with him, if we seek him with all our hearts. Can we go back to the other slide? I'm sorry. So uh, the strategy, I believe, is this one. Okay, We are looking to Jesus Christ. I mean, we are laying aside. We are... Uh, or is that? We lay aside weight in sin and we run with patience. We look away from those weight in sin by looking unto Jesus. It's like uh, the statement that said, we stop bad habit by starting a new one. You cannot just stop bad habit and be a, a clean slate. You need to stop bad habit by starting a new one. There is this uh, lady who has a, uh, a dog. She's trying to train it, uh, <clears throat> uh, train on what it does. So he wants the dog, or she wants the dog to eat only when she says so. So she tried to give uh, a steak or a temptation. No, of course, dog, you want that. But the dog would not eat it. But the dog has a strategy. What he does is that he doesn't look at the steak. He keeps looking at the owner. Until she will say, okay, it's time to eat. That's the time he will grab it. We cannot, uh, I think it's the same with the verse that says, if somebody loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. John Piper made a, 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 a comprehensive study on that one. It means our heart, when we love the world, the love for the Father is not the same. The heart cannot love God in the world at the same time. That's what the verse is saying. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. Because when we love the world, we will. We are, that's the time we are forsaking the Lord. That is the grammar over there. We uh, lay aside the weight and the sin by looking unto Jesus. It accomplishes many things. 
it solves our problem when we focus on Jesus Christ. Okay, that's a rich one in, uh, in uh, Bible grammar. All right. And I think this is the implant strategy for, for us. Uh, we can have that. Yes, one. that's one. I think this is the story. These are patriarchs, uh, Abraham, when the uh, 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 obeyed God and called out to go to a place, did not know where he's going. Those are patriarchs and the prophets, our leaders. And what more shall I say of time to fail me of Gideon, Barak, Samson, and the others and prophets? Who through faith conquered kingdoms. Those are our leaders. And Israelites say still that they are our, uh, our root as Gentiles. Romans says, and if the first fruit is holy, so is the lump. If the root is holy, so are the branches. Who are these? But if some of the branches are were broken off, and thou, being a wild olive, was grafted in, grafted in among them, and didst become partaker with them of the root of the fatness of the olive tree. Israel is like the trunk, and we are just partakers of their history. We are joined into their history of their memory. That's why we name our kids with Bible names. It has become our history. But eventually, that's fulfilled with Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, in other words, Christ is the first fruit. And then in uh, John 15, 5, I am the true vine, and ye are the branches. We are entered into this history because of Jesus Christ. And in Galatians 6, uh, 3, 6 to 9, they that are of faith are the same sons of Abraham. We are the Jewish community now because of our faith in Jesus Christ. We are children of Abraham, not only the Jewish community. So fleshly, uh, 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 Belonging to the Jewish nation has become a spiritual one. And then uh, verse in the same book in chapter, verse 13, 15, Christ hath redeemed us that the blessings of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. So we are here now. We are in the process of this story of creating a life of the two or three are gathered in my name. There am I in the midst of them, the Bible says. And he said in Ephesians 2.10 that ye are God's workmanship. And he had uh, laid path on them that we should walk in them. We are continuing a story, my friend. We are in a story. This world is not our home. If America, God forbid, would come into a place where Christians is outlawed, it's criminal to be a believer, maybe we'll have our next fellowship at prison. Oh, you're here too? I thought you go to some place, some prison, eh? <laughs> some other prison. Oh, let's have worship over here. God forbid that will happen. But we are in a journey. Oh, how we want this to stay. We want this freedom to stay so we have opportunities for, for ministry. But the story is moving on, brothers. There will be time that the rich will need to be poor. And the poor need to be rich. It's not the same story. I'm saying this probably to warn us because of things happening that some people want to create this America into a third world. It's not a big problem for me. I came from a third world. But I don't want to go back. <clears throat> I think that's the story that is saying us in here. We need to belong to this kind of story. And then, uh, <clears throat> it's like, this is just like a reminder for the for last first sermon that I delivered to you. Let me start with the illustration. What face do you see there? Is it a young lady or an old lady? Those who say it's a young lady, raise your hand. Okay. They also say it's an old lady picture, raise your hand. Ooh. All right. Somebody, uh, I'll try to explain that to you if I can. This is the young lady, that's her eyebrow, that's her nose, going, uh, looking to that direction, right? But the old lady is, this is the eyes, this is the nose, and this is the mouth. That's the old one. 
some people, some uh, teaching says we are like that. We are composed of two nature. That's who we are. But I submit to you, no. What we are is the other one. The thing that we are created in Christ. Why? Because Colossians 3, 9 says, put off the old man and put on the new man. That's who you are. And this is a review of the illustration that uh, uh, Tony Evans said. We can live this life even with the presence of sin in our life. How is that? Sin is like the nature that's in there, but we can live in a house like that because we actually do. There are trash in a house. As long as the trash or garbage is segregated and covered, the house is fine. But if you let the house be garbage all over the place, you are welcoming the roaches and the rudents and all those unwanted demons to enter the house. Right? So we need to cover, we need to cover the, the sin picture of the trash. What he's trying to say is that let's start to believe that we are saint. Why? Because God says so, we are saint. We are righteous. But we don't believe that, do we? We always cling to, no, my uh, cordon is a little short. I easily get angry. That's who I am. Oh, wow, you're fighting for your sin? No, fight for righteousness. We believe who we are in Jesus Christ. We start from that because we walk by faith, not by sight. If we walk by sight, we only define ourselves with our experience. Oh, I always fall with this kind of temptation. Therefore, that's what I am. No. We live by faith in what God says who we are. So, are we sinners? No. We are saints. Of course, we are not going around this world. Oh, look at me. I'm a saint. This is a mental exercise for believers to say, even if I make mistake, I am still righteous because I am forgiven on the cross. Remember, God has not only forgiven the things that you did as mistake, he has forgiven your condition. Our condition, like if you have a cancer, with respect to uh, those who have cancer, it's like, uh, let's just say we have illness, terminal illness. God has forgiven that situation or that condition. Sometimes it's come out, but we can say, Lord, it comes out again. The flesh had taken over again, but thank you for the cross. Because of that, I am forgiven with this condition. Does it make sense? That's why we are righteous. Even if we make mistake, we sin, we are still righteous. Let's fight for who we are in Christ, not who we are in the flesh. I, that's the fight of faith. It's, believe that sometimes the evidence is contrary, but let's believe that because it's what God says. <clears throat> that's our fight. Putting away... The sin or the, or the trash. All right, this is my second to the last slide now. So if I spend uh, five minutes in one slide, we are over time. Did I? <laughs> second to the last one. The Bible says, uh, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Also knowing that tribulation brings out patience. And patience experience and experience hope. This one baffled me or kind of like puzzled in this one. I thought we believe we have hope and then we have experience of hope. This one is the reverse. He says we had experience and an experience brings hope. How does this happen? I discovered that experience, that experience it literally means a proven character. Proven character are those done in secret. That's why we have that room over there. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, when you pray, you pray in secret. And God who sees it will reward you openly. And then in the lower verse, I think uh, uh, verse 12, he said, when you do alms, when you help somebody, let not the right hand know what the left hand do. 
Do not sound a trumpet. Oh, look at me. I have helped this one, so and so. Well, that's what we do, right? We'd like to let people know that we help someone. We, uh, that's, that's not us, probably the, the flesh. But he was saying, let it, be, let it not be known. So, if all our character or proven character are unknown, that's kind of like lonely. <laughs> Nobody knows. You have to have to grow into a situation that eventually the Lord watches what's going on and he notices, notices them and he will reward them eventually, right? So proven character will eventually or it needs to grow up into a hope knowing that what we are doing serving the Lord in secret, God is taking note for them. Or it will stop. You'll stop doing it. You will have, uh, you'll have to announce it to people. Why? Because well, somebody's going to know. But if we believe in the heart that God knows, then that experience will go on. That proven experience will go on. And I think that's why experience or proven character can bring out hope. This is one of the few rivers that works and then faith, not faith, become works. We can only continue to do secret services for the Lord only if we believe that in the end God sees us. I think that's, uh, that makes sense to me. And the last one is sample of New Testament statement of faith. In America, this is the only country that have a holiday of Thanksgiving. And I think that's why America is blessed. When I first come over here, people are so nice and people are so appreciative. Oh, wonderful, I like your tie, I like you. I feel that all of you are, oh, what's it called, that flattering. <laughs> These people are flattering everybody else. I'm not used to it. But on a further study and further study, oh wow, maybe this is why we are blessed. I'm an American now. <laughs> when I go to the Philippines, if I say I'm American, you would laugh at me. <laughs> but yeah, I think one of the reasons why we are blessed because this is the only country that has made holiday of Thanksgiving. We'd like to say, Hope it continues, but we are a thankful people. And I think that is a life of faith because the Bible says in everything, in every situation, we give thanks. It'd be hard for other people, but the Bible says this is God's will for you. You need to grow into a situation where you will learn how to thank the Lord in bad situation. We can say, oh, thank you, Lord. At least it is like, like that. Well, I don't know your story. It might be the story of success that needs to be a failure to be considered as a story of faith. Or it might be a failure that needs to be a successful one to be considered a story of faith. It's different for every one of us. Another people's story is seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? In all these things will be added unto you. That's my story. Why? I grew up in poverty. One time I questioned God, I thought seek you first kingdom of God and all these things will be added to us. Because one time I was sent by my parents to borrow rice. Because we don't have rice in the house and my parents were shy. I, I found out afterwards they were shy to be the one borrowing so they sent their kid to borrow for them. <laughs> Go and borrow rice for them. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, suddenly, uh, uh, while I'm growing up, I, I realized there's a growing bitterness in my, in my heart because of that one. Oh, wow. But uh, I think I developed some, some uh, endurance on, on my part. Yeah, I want to uh, give it to my kids. Sometimes the kids wouldn't want to eat. Let him be hungry. But the wife came, come on, yeah, let them be hungry. She experience how to be hungry. 
Well, I'm extending my message already. Uh, let me go back. <clears throat> Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. This is the backbone of forgiveness. If you believe that God will deal with it, then you can let go. You can forgive other people, right? I think many of my suffering is because God is taking vengeance of me of what I, I did to some people. Or, on the other way around, I, I said, Lord, some people are mistreating me. I believe you will deal with it. This is just a minute example of what we have in New Testament. There are many principles over there. But I think uh, you got the point that this life is for a life of faith that will be remembered for eternity. Let me close in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that we have this opportunity. Some people need to be successful so that you will see, we will see a life of faith in them. But some people need to be on their knees too so that we will see that uh, we will understand that there is a life of faith waiting for us to walk on. And this different storyline, I pray, Lord, that myself included that I would live a life of faith, that I'd be confident that what I am accomplishing is because of faith, not because of pride or uh, some other motivations. Help us, Lord, further this study into our hearts. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.